from shooting at US drones to kidnapping attempts in broad daylight, and a gunman in a clown suit. If you hear a terrifying story from the south of the border, Jesus, Jesus, go, 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 go. chances are it involves the fearsome Mexican drug cartels. Cartels are known for their extreme violence, including public executions, tortures, and worse. In this video, we'll cover some of the most disturbing, terrifying, and downright bizarre Mexican cartel encounters caught on tape. Whenever problems with the cartels are mentioned, one of the first things people will say is, why doesn't the Mexican government go in and simply take care of them? Well, this is why. The drug cartels are better armed and better prepared than many armies, with armored personnel carriers, machine guns, trucks, and other powerful vehicles at their disposal. The cartel's access to such sophisticated and diverse equipment is a testament to their vast financial resources gained primarily through the illegal drug trade, human trafficking, and other illicit activities. Some cartels have even been known to have entire fleets of ships and aircrafts at their disposal, ensuring that bringing them to justice is no easy task. Human trafficking is very common with cartels. For many cartels, especially those operating in regions with less stringent law enforcement or those with porous borders, human trafficking represents an opportunistic and lucrative venture. And contrary to what most people will tell you, men, women, and children are all quite literally up for grabs. Look how coordinated the trucks are as they maneuver in on their victim. Bystanders, clearly aware of what's going on, all scatter as soon as the trucks pull up and open the doors. This is the 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 no, 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 Aquí fueron a balancear en la presidencia. Se metió una troca a la verga, era está la troca a la verga en la presidencia. ¿La verde? ¿Cuál? Una azul que se metió en la presidencia. Mira, pero todas las pinches trocas. Footage from inside a restaurant shows people attempting to go about their business while workers warn them of what just went down outside. The problem with the cartels owning huge sections of territory in Mexico is that there aren't just signs telling you when you've entered cartel land. These two tourists were on their way to Cancun when men with guns jumped out of the trucks to stop them. 
Despite not knowing the language, the cartel members repeatedly tell them no problem and encourage them to calm down. Oh my God, they have guns. Jesus, Jesus, go, 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 no, 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 please, 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 what? Please, 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 what? Please, please, please. Please, what? Please, what? No, Espanol, please. We just want, we're just. Please, please, please. No problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. Okay, no problem. You will. Come for four. Don't leave us. Please. No, 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 no,
if the United States military is using it, you can rest assured that the Mexican cartels are looking to copy it. That's the case when it comes to so-called drone warfare. This footage shows a Mexican drug cartel using a remote-controlled drone to drop bombs on the rivals. While nowhere near as sophisticated as what you might see used against terrorists, This footage provides that it still gets the job done. More and more. It seems that the Mexican government has lost its ability to keep a lid on the cartel's wars raging across Mexico. The cell phone footage from Villares shows cartel vehicles speeding around the city armed to the teeth, flaunting their defiance of the laws while the citizens cower in the homes and shops. <laughs> To coordinate their operations, cartels use encrypted radios, cell phones, and other advanced communication technologies, which help them stay one step ahead of the cops. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman is a notorious Mexican drug lord and former leader of the Sinaloa cartel, one of the most powerful drug trafficking organizations in the world. In August 2016, El Chapo's son, Jesus Alfredo, was kidnapped from a high-end restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, Mexico, by armed men. Footage shows diners scattering and hiding under the tables while multiple men are abducted and forced to kneel. The kidnapping was interpreted as a direct attack on El Chapo's family and an attempt to undermine the Sinaloa cartel's influence, coming at a time when El Chapo was in jail. Assassinations aren't just part of the job when you're in a cartel, but some attackers really like to go above and beyond. This video is terrifying for several reasons, particularly the fact that the assassin is dressed like a clown. The footage starts innocently enough, with a band playing a song. Suddenly, a clown moves past the camera, and several shots ring out.
Despite the camera being obscured, you can clearly hear the sound of people running for their lives. In this case, the target was a senior Mexican drug cartel member. The United States border with Mexico is one of the most hotly contested subjects in North American politics. For this reason, soldiers are often assigned to patrol both sides. These men, however, are not soldiers. They are, in fact, cartel members who have dressed up as Mexican military and have taken it upon themselves to patrol the border. Why? It's difficult to tell. <laughs> they're looking to apprehend people coming back and forth so they can kidnap them. Whatever the case, it's safe to assume it's not benevolent. When it comes to the cartels, the Mexican police are not known for their restraint. When they received word that two cartel chiefs were making their way between two cities, they responded with deadly ferocity. This video shows just some of the aftermath, including burned out cars and trucks dotting the roadways. hard to tell what's more distressing, the extent of the damage or the fact that nobody's bothered to clean up yet. Tijuana is just one of the most popular places in Mexico for foreigners to visit, but let's hope nobody was looking for first impressions when this happened. This unsafe footage shows a violent shooter erupting in the middle of a busy neighborhood, with trucks simply pulled into the middle of the street as hundreds of gunshots erupt. There's hardly any telling who's doing the shooting, but it seems to be more than a dozen truckfuls of assailants at least. In some parts of Mexico, shootouts like this have become disturbingly common. This footage actually shows a reporter getting stuck in the middle of a small-scale war between cops and cartel members. You can clearly see the man taking cover as gunshots ring out just across the road from him. From the sound, it's clear that both the police and the cartels are packing some serious heat. 
most likely assault rifles such as AK-47s and AR-15s, sniper rifles, and machine guns. Mariachi, me voy a pasar a este lado. Reportero. Prensa, prensa. Reportero. Imagen del Golfo. Agua, agua, agua. Agua, Hola, verga, dime, 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 dime. Vete a la verga, me quedé en el fuego cruzado. A la puta madre, estoy todo raspado. Ah, lárgate de ahí, güey. Ábrete, ábrete, vete a la CR, güey. Vete a la CR en breve. After several minutes of continuous gunfire, the reporter and his team finally work up the courage to move, only to encounter even more shots. Hard to imagine just how terrifying that experience really was. All that noise isn't conjured out of thin air, you know. In fact, one anonymous cartel member was kind enough to share just a few of the weapons in his home apartment arsenal. While upbeat music players, he scans around his tiny room to show us a handgun, multiple assault rifles, and more than half a dozen walkie-talkies. <laughs> The scariest part is that he doesn't exactly look to be living that glamorous a life. Guess it can be difficult to escape a life of crime once you're in. Despite being at war with the cops, the cartels in Mexico also really like to act like the cops. In this case, they've set up a checkpoint to extort drivers who are passing through their territory. In this case, they're charging a man a whopping $1,000 to simply pass through safely, yet the driver instantly complies. The implication is clear. If he doesn't pay, something very bad is going to happen. Uh -huh. 
foto para el cartel noreste para que te vea una gente moleste para sí. Gu guárdame el teléfono por favor porque no te lo quiero quitar ok guárdamelo oh, no que sí, tenemos sí. el mapa nomás bueno, hijo, ah. hay que ponerle mil dólares aquí para la mañana 500 y 500 para que se me vayan bien le voy a dar una clave ok y esa partida era se te cayó como son tiles no es por si la andabas buscando es para la protección para la protección de ustedes viejo yes. Ayúdale tú viejo también ya no, en efectivo no teníamos ya esto nos quitaron ayer el yo no tengo Allá en no. efectivo tío. es que no teníamos en efectivo ya lo pagué ahorita en, la, en los impuestos allá pagué el déjame si quieres empachar gas ¿no? ahí ahí está este barco oh. también okay. échale échale pa ¿Eh? Eso en 300, yo no me tengo 300. Nada más hay 300 cada. Sabores. Pone 300 dólares más en 50 cada quien. Yo en efectivo no. Yo no tengo ya efectivo. Déjame ver si alcanzo aquí, espérame. ¿Qué rollo? Ya estamos aquí en el centro de la ciudad. El hombre solo tiene 300 dólares en cash. Lucky for him, los cartel miembros estaban en un buen mood. They decide that $150 each is enough for the man and his passenger and send the couple on their way. With all the bad blood, man blood in general, between the cartel members and the cops, it's hard to imagine having to put on a badge every day and drive around town. However, all across Mexico, tens of thousands of men and women do just that. The result? Sometimes it's not very pretty. This dash cam footage shows a police officer driving through a cartel area where abandoned cars seem to cover the highway. As he approaches a tunnel, shots ring out, nearly striking the driver. Fortunately, much like cartel vehicles, this particular police car was equipped with reinforced glass, protecting the occupants inside. If there's anyone the cartels hate more than the police, it's members of other cartels. For this reason, rival gang members are frequently assassinated, attacked, or even kidnapped. In this case, a gang member manages to escape by the skin of his teeth, jumping out of a moving car after several gang members grab him in the middle of the street. <laughs> It's clear from the man's reaction that he knew very well what would happen once he reached his destination. Again, selling drugs is just one small part of what cartels do. They're actually more akin to the mafia in ways they constantly seek out new ways to expand their operations. Hijacking is just one such example. This video shows a daring attempted at hijacking involving multiple vehicles trying to steal a cargo truck. After forcing the driver to a stop, they break the windshield in an effort to force him out. One of the cartel members is even wearing a safety vest to ensure he doesn't get hit by traffic. Maniobra brusca detectada. Okay, 
dale, dale, dale. After commandeering the truck, the cartel members take it back to a secure spot. Reverse footage shows just how quickly the driver and his passenger were to comply. When the cartels can't buy armored vehicles, they simply make their own. Imagine being pulled over in the middle of the street by an armed personnel just so they can parade their equipment by you. Heavily camouflaged and ready for even the toughest fight, it would take a missile or a bomb to knock out these homemade tanks. Videos like this just go to show that the cartels are not playing around when it comes to equipment. Mess with their drug money, and they're going to mess with you back. There is virtually no way to estimate just how many people are kidnapped by cartels every year but we do know it is one of their primary ways of generating income. One of the most common motives for kidnappings by cartels is to demand ransom money from the family or associates of the kidnapped individual. However, they can also be used as a form of retaliation against rivals or government officials who are seen as threats to the cartel's operations. This terrifying footage shows cartel members breaking down the door of a home in broad daylight in order to abduct a man. Once they enter, several shots ring out, indicating that the people inside might have put up a fight. Moments later, a limping man is brought out and put into the back of a car.
Cartels aren't known to travel anywhere alone. When they do, they put themselves at serious risk of assassination, kidnapping, or arrest. Gangs being gangs, they know it's better to travel in packs like this one. Known as cartel caravans, these are large, organized movements of dozens or even hundreds of vehicles. Alongside drugs, these caravans can also be used to smuggle weapons or as a show of force to other cartels or authorities. Whatever this massive caravan is getting up to, it will no doubt have serious consequences. In an effort to keep themselves free of the watchful eye of authorities, Mexican drug cartels have taken to shooting down any drones they see, be they military, civilian, or otherwise. This footage shows a couple of drone operators attempting to investigate some cartel operations in the desert, only to end up being shot at by one of the gang members. Oh, he's telling the guy, look. Is that the top of the flat mountain? Yeah. So that's Chapito's people. Yep. He's got a rifle with him too. Oh, he's gonna try to shoot at me right now. He's gonna shoot at me right now. That's a little cheap. Oh, yeah, oh, there you go. Shots fired. He's getting ready to fire. Did he fire? Yeah, he was shooting. He's still shooting. They're talking to somebody. Someone else is. Oh, there we go. That guy's shooting at me. There we go. Fortunately, the drone is far enough away that they can't actually hit it. Nonetheless, the operators take evasive action to get their expensive piece of surveillance equipment out of the line of fire. People who live in the American Southwest know to be on the lookout for unmarked trucks and vans. Though it's true that these are often used to smuggle people across the border, that's only a small part of how cartels make their money. In this instance, the person filming thinks the truck is attempting to steal water. In a bold move, they decide to try and confront the truck driver. See? I knew he'd be coming at us. Hello. How you doing? Uh, you speak Spanish? No. How, do, do I look like you speak Spanish? Uh, <laughs> I, my, I mean, I little speak English. Yeah. Yeah. You question? No. No. Okay. Is that is that your tank there? Yeah. This is the the one. Month yeah, I just picture. called you about yeah. that. The water tank and the well, yellow it's truck. actually um, he's uh, over here a lot of people car. are I'm not sure what to do here. A lot of people are talking um, about people stealing water. I want to make sure that people we're, we're in a drought. I'll make sure nobody's stealing water. If you're illegal, you have nothing to worry about. I'm sorry. At all, no problemo. 
But um, we did call the cops, and they'll be okay. watching this place Should right here to make sure that wait for the unit? that people are still in water. Is we've been everybody in the neighborhood okay, has been. Thank you. They told us about this spot right. that that you're here okay. all the time, so everybody knows about it. it we we got a call from somebody else. Yeah. I, 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 I just called the sheriff on this guy. There's no tags on that truck. After some suspicious maneuvering, the man exits the truck and attempts to confront the two men filming them. After some discussion, they reveal that they've called the cops, and the man quickly decides to leave. Because they rarely have an issue with funding, sometimes the cartels get their hands on military-grade equipment. This footage on a Mexican news station shows cartel members using what appears to be a carrying a US-made anti-take weapon. This particular weapon is recognized as one of the most effective anti-armor weapons in the world. Terrifyingly, the system has a range of about 1.5 miles, providing significant standoff capabilities to engage targets from a distance. Each missile costs around a quarter million dollars. Because kidnapping is such a good way to bring in quick cash, cartels are constantly working on new ways to get their hands on rivals, wealthy politicians, or even innocent civilians. This footage from the border state of Chihuahua shows a probable drug dealer hanging around in front of the store. Suddenly, a silver car approaches and pulls into the store parking lot. You can clearly see that there are five other vehicles closely following that one, each of which takes up a strategic position around the individual. Within seconds, a wave of men, guns drawn, approach the victim, grab him, and take him into a truck. In less than a minute, the man's entire day and possibly life was changed. A cartel head squad, often referred to as a Sicario group in Spanish-speaking regions, is a group of armed individuals employed by drug cartels or organized crime syndicates to carry out assassinations, enforcement, protection, and intimidation operations. These squads play a crucial role in the enforcement of cartel rules, the execution of rivals or traitors, and the intimidation of government officials, law enforcement, and civilians. Ánimo, sicarios. Comandamos, Meni, comandamos, Meni, 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 comandamos. Meni, 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 comandamos, Meni, comandamos. 
Se tomó lechito. Ánimo, sicarios, ánimo, sicarios. Hay que tomarlo los del 50. Posa para la cámara. Posa, posale, posale. Posale para la cámara. Chido. Ahí está. Es video, güey. Hola sicarios. Vení, vení, vení. Pésale. Veo que se mira, que se mira por allá, que se mira. Ah, todo bien, todo bien. Eso. Bueno, está bueno. Ahí te cargamos, ahí te cargamos, bien pendiente ahí. No, no te tomando un video. ¡Ay, tele! This footage shows one such group waiting to receive orders regarding their next target. Remember the legendary drug kingpin El Chapo whose son was kidnapped earlier? Well, the gang seen in this video can be seen essentially declaring war on one of Chapo's cartels, claiming that they will soon seize control of the state of Guanajuato in central Mexico. There are dozens of heavily armed men in the video, all of whom fired their guns in the air after receiving the signal. These are all men who would willingly die for their cartels and, given the short lives of the average gang member, probably will before long. It's estimated that more than 30,000 people are reportedly killed each year since 2018 due to criminal violence in Mexico. And considering how heavily armed the cartel members we've seen so far have been, this should hardly come as a shock. What may shock you is where any of these bodies end up in cartel-controlled cemeteries. This footage shows massive mausoleums that have been donated to house the bodies of major cartel members, some of which are almost large enough to resemble small churches. Es un panteón aquí en Culiacán, Sinaloa. Tiene hasta sus propias habitaciones, aire acondicionado, jacuzzi.
So, while you may dramatically lower your life expectancy fighting for the cartels, you can at least enjoy the afterlife in style. The cartels can't make money unless they get their drugs into the United States and other neighboring nations. However, getting large amounts of drugs across the border is no easy task, especially nowadays. That's why they've turned to more sophisticated methods, including submarines. Often called narco submarines, these custom-built, self-propelled vessels are difficult to detect and can travel for hundreds of miles under the water. Auto Subaco! It's gonna be hard to get on! Auto Subaco! This footage shows a brave Coast Guard soldier actually jumping on top of the sub and forcing open its hatch, apprehending the smugglers inside despite being in the middle of the ocean. It's journalism's job to speak truth to power, and cartels are very, very powerful indeed. The CCTV footage shows cartel members burning down a newspaper building in Cordoba, Veracruz. Footage shows the man breaking into the office and pouring gasoline amongst the cubicles. Though nobody was hurt, the blaze completely destroyed the building. Clearly, they must have printed something that the cartels didn't like. Fortunately, they've since reopened. This terrifying dashcam video shows just how quickly a situation can escalate. In the beginning, the man is actually yawning while he and his wife are stuck in traffic. However, everything changes when a man emerges out of nowhere and points a gun at them. The man completely freezes while one of the assailants tries to pull him out of the vehicle. However, after a few seconds, he regains control of himself and drives off. No, no. He may have lost his wallet in the exchange, but he still has his car and his life. The video doesn't need to be long to be terrifying. In this case, some heavily armed cartel members are driving by either the police or a rival gang and mock shooting them from their car. The scariest thing about this is that they could easily pull the trigger for real. Or even worse, the other guys could see what they're doing and decide to take preemptive action. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show how recklessly these cartel members live. They're always ready to fight and die at a moment's notice. It's often difficult to explain why the cartels often get so much support from Mexican citizens. For instance, in many regions where cartels operate, there are limited economic opportunities. 
Cartels can provide a significant source of income for individuals and families who might otherwise have few options for employment. Cartels also tend to invest in local communities, building infrastructure, providing social services, and, believe it or not, policing crime. they can parade down the street to applause like this. Whatever you feel about cartels, one thing is for sure, they know how to party. This footage shows a so-called narco party for the daughter of a cartel member, El Tio Laco. This is the sort of party that would put even a Kardashian birthday to shame. From ornate dining facilities to fireworks and fountains, it seems that El Tio Laco spared no expense for his daughter's big day. Also, lots of heavily armed cartel members on hand to ensure nobody attempted to mess with the host, his family, or the many talented musicians hired to play the event. By now you should know that drug cartels and terrorists have a lot in common. Like terrorist organizations, cartels are known to use violence or the threat of violence to secure compliance or silence from the communities in which they operate. They also like to send video threats to news organizations and government institutions. In this video, members of the Chaipas cartel threaten to intensify violence against the police due to the department's alleged links with the Sinaloa cartel. <laughs> Francisco Orantes Avaya, alias El Panchito, mientras sigas protegiendo al güero pulseras del cartel de Sinaloa y mandando a tus policías a cobrar cuotas a los migrantes, te seguiremos atacando las bases de la policía. Lo mismo va para ti, Yair Hernández Terán, alias El Hércules. Sigue jugándole al vivo, apoyando al güero pulseras. Y la siguiente base que reventaremos será uno de la policía estatal fronteriza. Ya todo mundo sabemos que ustedes dos son los responsables de los secuestros y cobros de piso en Chiapas. The men in the video are extremely heavily armed and it's clear that they can more than back up their threats. This viral video shows a convoy from the CJNG cartel one of the most notorious drug cartels in Mexico. CJNG stands for Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generación. 
the group emerged in the early 2010s, quickly gaining notoriety for its violent tactics and for challenging both rival drug trafficking organizations and state authorities. The CJNG is involved in a wide array of criminal activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, kidnapping, and murder, with operations extending beyond Mexico to the United States and other countries. This footage shows a massive compound guarded by heavily armed individuals who seem to have taken over the entire town. It's typically adorable when kids mimic adults, but in this case, we really have to question what they are learning. According to this Mexican news station, these young children are recreating a drug checkpoint somewhere in Sinaloa. This is not only a state in the northwest of Mexico, but is widely associated with the Sinaloa cartel, one of the most powerful and notorious drug trafficking organizations in the world. <laughs> While these kids may have toy guns for now, the sad truth is that they will probably be carrying the real thing soon enough. TikTok offers both cartels and cops a chance to interact with the world in real time, sharing videos that would otherwise never see the light of day. In this case, La Chapiza alleged criminal members of the Sinola cartel are using TikTok to spread their life as drug traffickers to thousands of children and young people who get to see them showing off weapons, training, and flying planes over massive fields of drugs. As you've probably guessed, this is just part of a recruitment effort aimed at attracting new recruits to act as soldiers in the next generation of drug warfare. El Chapo is so notorious that even his birthplace, Bediraguanta, was heavily guarded. Apparently, this is less about protecting the town and more about protecting El Chapo's family from people who might do them harm. This footage was taken at a checkpoint about 30 minutes from the La Tuna Ranch, where Miss Maria Consuelo Lorea, El Chapo's mother, lives. We've already seen what happened to El Chapo's son, so it's not hard to imagine that rival gangs might want to hurt his mother too.
what's even more impressive is that he appears to be directing all of this from prison. We've talked already about how cartels put armor on the vehicles to protect the cab, engine, and gas tank. However, this footage from a real cartel member shows just what it takes to survive a shot to the windshield. Bulletproof glass is made by layering a combination of two or more types of glass with plastic inner layers, which are then bonded together using heat and pressure. The process creates a unified material that can absorb and distribute the energy from impacts, including multiple bullet hits. Despite bans from TikTok and other video hosting platforms, cartel members are still managing to upload videos of their exploits, including footage of them stacking huge amounts of cash riding around in boats and cars while heavily armed, and maintaining huge fills of marijuana and poppies. There is even footage of a fully camouflaged boat made to look like a rock. Though you might question why the cartels are so eager to give away their secrets, the answer is quite simple. They want to look cool. If they can highlight the so-called fun parts of being in a drug gang, Maybe they can encourage more young kids to join them, and not their rivals. Colombians pass by my offshore platform. Yeah. My life be 